Um, this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually on the road right now, uh, and I brought along with me my Sungzu 500. Anyway, I'd done a review about the Sungzu 1000 a few months ago, and I was actually pretty surprised with how it performed. But this is a pretty interesting little unit, so I'm going to see how it works here on the road. So while I'm on the road, I've actually got uh, my youngest little prepper here and she wanted to come with me. And so we're taking the time to do this quick video. Uh, so far, I've actually been surprised by this unit. There are some certain updates that I wish they had done. One of the things that they did do is they actually did put in a legit 12 volt plug. Before it was an adapter, you plugged it in and then it had the 12 volt plug hanging off of it. And I actually lost that adapter on my last unit. So I'm really glad that they updated it and put in a real 12 volt plug. They've still got this uh, flappy, uh, silicone here for covering the outlets. Now I like the one on the bottom because it flips down but this one up here it gets in the way so I still find that kind of annoying. I wish they would have updated that and I don't think it's really necessary you know. Um, I don't think myself or anyone else would be using this out in the rain or some sort of wet environment where you would have to plug up these outlets because if I've got this thing out I'm pretty much going to be using it, which means these outlets are not going to be covered anyway. They could probably do away with this uh, silicone rubber cover, whatever it is here, but it's really not that bad. The screen though, holy cow, they need to update the screen. You can't probably see it right now, but this little screen just shows me a battery, and it shows me in increments of 20% what the battery level is at. It tells me that I have the output uh, for the 12 volt turned on and for the USB turned on. And that's pretty much it. Now you can kind of see right here, uh, they still stuck with this, I don't even know what kind of four prong plug this is, uh, but basically plugs in here and then it starts to show us exactly how much voltage is coming in. Now right now it says it's at 29.2 volts and I don't really have any specs on this panel and so I don't know what the actual maximum voltage is. So I'm just assuming that that's okay. One of the things here is it does show the temperature of the internal components, which I guess is a good thing to know, but not something that I would really think needs to be taking up the screen. So that's probably something they could do away with as well. And then to turn on the inverter, you actually just turn on this switch and you'll hear it beep. And I've been testing this out for quite a while now to kind of see how it works and if I can really rely on it. And I've actually been really surprised at how well it runs my laptop. But I notice if I have my laptop plugged in, I have to first just plug in the cord that has the adapter box on it. And then I have to plug that into my laptop at two separate times. So basically what I have to do, I have to take my laptop. Now keep in mind, this is not a normal laptop here. This is a gaming level laptop. And I have that kind of laptop because I have to do video editing. And so basically I need a really high powered laptop so this does use a good chunk of power. Uh, usually I'll see it around 250, I've seen the highest 280 watts when it's drawing uh, and using a lot of power. And so basically these, these are the steps is I have to plug this in first and then into the laptop. And now I can see I'm charging on my laptop, but for some reason, and I don't understand why, but if I take this already plugged into the laptop, and then plug it straight in. This little red light on the front starts flashing and now you can hear it beep. And it gets an overload for some reason. Now I can't imagine that my laptop is making it surge above what this can handle and so it's kind of weird to me. I unplug it to reset the inverter. I just have to flip back the inverter switch, turn it back on, hear it beep, give it a few seconds to kind of get booted up. Huh. Now it's saying it's even not being plugged in, that it's overloading, something like that. Let me try unplugging the solar panel. And now I'll turn it on. Wait for it to boot up. Plug this in. well for me over the last few days, but maybe because it's at 40% charge, uh, I've only had it above 60% or higher when I've been using my laptop. But for some reason, it doesn't want to run my laptop right now. Very interesting, not sure why. 
Now, I don't actually have a way of testing the actual output of this panel, simply because it's got a really weird adapter. But so far, from what I've been able to tell, working with the Sung Zoo, it's enough power to get it charged up, but that's only when I've been using it without anything running off of it at the same time. So for example, I wasn't running my laptop or any other lights or even a phone charger while I was charging it up. I do like the panel though and how it folds up. It makes it very easy for transport like this and I can just roll it out and I'm good to go. I don't normally hang it up on the back of the car like this. I just got a carabiner. The sun happens to be that way. So this kind of worked for the direction I needed to put the solar panel. But overall, I've been pretty happy with it. There is a decent amount of padding on the back of each panel. And the other thing you want to remember is that really these are eight different solar panels that are just connected together. So we call this one solar panel, but it's really just a bunch of small solar panels. Normally when you grab a flexible solar panel like this, you'll actually hear the crunching of the cells. And it's got a hard enough back on each of these that it doesn't actually get any cracking. And it does have another cable in here where you can actually connect two of these together to make more power to go into the sun zoo. So this is a pretty short road trip that I'm doing. Uh, we're only a few hours from home. But one of the big reasons I actually bring something like this is for some reason our car won't stay turned on for more than 20 minutes unless something happens. Like you roll down a window or open a door or something like that. It's kind of like a computer in a sense that if you leave it running long enough, it goes into sleep mode or gets turned off or whatever. And right now we got a couple hour wait before we can go on to our next activity. And so we just have time to kill. And I want to be comfortable in the car, but if it keeps turning off, then it's kind of annoying. And we've already tried changing the setting to be able to just have the car run nonstop. For some reason there is no setting to do that. Woo! And so having something like this allows me to keep powering things like a laptop or phones or whatever and not run into any power issues. Now right now with the solar panel up outside, uh, I can hear the fan running in this. So it is trying to keep cool. It seems that it only turns on the fan when it's charging or when you use it really, really hard. One of the things that Sung Zoo likes to do is they like to have these fuses here on the back. Now here, these are 30 amp fuses, and on the right side it says working fuses, and on the left they are spare fuses. So in the event that you actually overuse it, you can just pop out the old fuse, put in a new fuse, and you're good to go. That is nice that they have extra fuses here. Uh, the Titan Solar Generator is another one that has fuses accessible. I believe the Energy Apex also had a fuse uh, easily accessible, but most manufacturers don't actually put fuse is easily accessible, so that's really nice that they did that. It does come in just over 20 pounds. It's really not heavy to move around. It's pretty much all battery. The inverter is pretty small at 500 watt, and so the majority of the weight is just the battery here. It's got a typical kind of briefcase style handle. It's metal. It feels like it's overbuilt. On the DC ports on the front here, it actually does have two ports for using something like a CPAP machine. This is something that can run a CPAP machine throughout the whole night, and Little Miss Prepper here keeps getting in the shot. So this is a 12 volt battery, and it's a 36 amp hour battery overall, and its peak wattage on the inverter is 1000 watts. So this is really applicable for something like DC fridge. A DC fridge does really well on something like this because it uses such little power. The DC fridge that I have, it's a 40 quart ice co. Works really, really well, it's very efficient. And on average, it uses only about 30 watt hours per hour. So something like this, it's pretty easy to get 10, 15, or even 20 hours out of it, depending on how much power it's having to use, which depends on how hot it is in the vehicle or wherever it's stored and so on. So I got my laptop plugged in and it's actually charging up just fine now. So not sure what was happening to it earlier, but when I pull out the panel charger, the screen goes off, turn the screen back on, and now it says I'm only at 20%. When I turned this on earlier, it was at 60%. And then when I started filming the video, it was at 40% and now it's at 20%. So for some reason, this battery calibration is off uh, because I've barely, barely used it. And uh, the solar panel hasn't been running on it for very long either, but now we can see it's charging. So I really, really am very disappointed with this screen. They really need to put something better on here. But other than that, my laptop is on, it's charging running without any problems. And one of the features that uh, a few people had asked about is can you charge at the same time as you're running stuff? And it can do that. It does have simultaneous charging capability. And now I'm using the wall charger to recharge up the rest of the Sun Tzu. And I really love this kilowatt meter. It's a useful tool that I think every prepper should have. So we can see here that we're using 122 volts, which is normal for a household outlet. And we're using 1.11 amps. You multiply that together, 
and it gives you the exact wattage, 136 watts. So that is exactly how much power is being pulled off of the wall charger in order to recharge the Sung Zoo, which means the whole thing charges up in roughly about four hours with the wall charger. You can see on the last test, it was at 59 minutes, 55 seconds. It ran at about 430 watts or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset this, and then we'll get this going here. And see, we're at a full battery. Turn this on. Okay, we surged over 500. See how, okay, so it didn't handle that surge for very long. Let me reset this, and we're gonna to have to ease it in to using over 500 watts. Turn that back on. Okay, well, we're pulling actually over 500. Let's see how long it'll roll with that. Okay, we can hear it's just starting to die. It's come all the way down to 475 watts running. This has been interesting. It started at 110 volts. But now it's at 99 volts. The amps have stayed the same, but the voltage has dropped. And that's on the AC output. So we've dropped about 45 watts overall. That's very interesting. It says it's at 60 degrees Celsius internally. The air coming out of the back is not, I wouldn't say it's hot, it's warm. Definitely not hot. I don't really feel any hot spots on the outer casing. It's a little warm here in the back, but really not much at all. Okay, it's really starting to peter out here. It keeps flashing, turning off the lights, but it's still trying to push hard. So that's pretty good. It uh, keeps kind of kicking back on. Oh, that time it did not kick back on. All right, really not that bad. So in total it ran just under 50 minutes because before I started filming, I had to make sure I had the right wattage and everything going through the watt meter. And so I ran it for about four or five minutes before actually filming. So it puts us right at about 50 minutes. And that's really not bad at all. It's pretty much what I expected it to do. Now the SKA501 is the little brother to this SKA1000. And this actually has an even bigger brother now called the SKA1500. And of course it's a 1500 watt hour battery, all that jazz. So they got the 500,000 and 1500, and they also have some even smaller models. They all look very similar, they got the same metal casing and everything like that. And as far as just basic units, they work. Are they good looking? No. Are the screens good? No. But the output is there. This one has given me a little bit of finicky issues, like with my laptop. Uh, this one I've actually really never had a problem with. One of the things to be aware of is that this unit does not have a regulated uh, 12 volt plug. So this plug right here actually is not regulated. Now looking at a couple other 500 watt units here, this is the EcoFlow River 600 and this is the Jackery 500. The Jackery 500 is probably the most well known and this is basically what Sung Tzu is competing with. Now the Sung Tzu wins in one way for sure and that's price. These come in on Amazon right about $430 right now. With the EcoFlow River 600, this thing is not worth getting without the expanded battery, for sure, because otherwise it's just a 288 watt hour battery. So by adding the extra battery to this, you're somewhere around 580 watt hours. And then of course the Jackery is right about 500 watt hours. Now the EcoFlow has a 600 watt inverter and the Jackery has a 500 watt inverter. Uh, between the three of these, I'd say the EcoFlow is probably my favorite, but just like its bigger brother, the Delta, it does take a long time to cool down. The Jackery is very simple and it works, and these things have been going for a long time now, and so these are definitely very reliable. So in terms of price, the Sun Tzu is $430, this is about $600 with the extra battery, and these are at about $500. So if you're looking for the cheapest one you can get for about 500 watt hours, then the Sun Tzu is the way to go. If you're looking for the highest quality, then I'd go more with like the EcoFlow or the Jackery. But really these are just gonna be more for like camping. Uh, you can definitely get away with running a DC fridge, some USB stuff, uh, maybe like a drone or a camera. That's what these are really designed around. These units here, I think are a little bit more ergonomic. I definitely wouldn't get it for an emergency, but for just portable lightweight power, I definitely recommend it. Anything beyond that, you're probably gonna want something bigger, more like the Titan. That's something that's actually capable of running multiple things around the house. These are just not gonna run multiple things around the house. Even just a classic refrigerator in the kitchen is only gonna run for about four or five hours tops on any of these units here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If there's any questions you have, please feel free to comment below. I do go down to the comment section and answer those questions. 
Also, you can reach me by email, which is just info at poweredportablesolar.com. And of course, you can find my written review of this on poweredportablesolar.com, as well as comparison on pretty much all other solar generators out there on the market. Now, I'm definitely going to ask that you click that like button and for sure subscribe. Click the bell. That way you get notified when I do more videos like this. I really appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you all next time. Hey there, what are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Hey. <laughs>